What's Happening is an American sitcom that graced the screens from August 1976 to April 1979 on ABC. Unlike its predecessors that faced setbacks, this show garnered favorable ratings and reviews. The sitcom, based on the film Cooley High, penned by Eric Monty, was the brainchild of Monty himself. Airing for three seasons and amassing a total of 65 episodes, What's Happening enjoyed modest success before meeting its cancellation in 1979. In this video, we'll spotlight some of the cast members from the comedy TV series What's Happening, who have since passed away. Join us as we remember these individuals. Don't forget to show your support by liking, commenting, and subscribing to our channel for more content like this. Fred Berry Fred Berry, an American actor and street dancer, gained fame for his portrayal in the sitcom What's Happening. The iconic character rerun, donned in his trademark red beret and suspenders, made Barry a household name. Tragically, Fred Berry passed away on October 21, 2003, at his Los Angeles residence. The 52-year-old actor, known for his struggles with diabetes and a recent stroke, reportedly succumbed to natural causes, as confirmed by a Los Angeles coroner's department spokesman. Rerun, along with his friends Raj and Dwayne, brought laughter to audiences during the 1976-79 sitcom. Barry revisited the role for a season on the updated What's Happening Now in 1985-86. Despite sitcom success, Barry faced personal challenges battling addiction to marijuana and cocaine during the original show's run. He candidly spoke of the drug culture within the studio. His financial journey included spending over a million dollars on drugs, cars, houses, and even an airplane. Barry, a six-time husband to four women, two of them twice, experienced a tumultuous personal life. In later years, Barry claimed to have turned his life around, embracing a new chapter as a Baptist minister. Capitalizing on his sitcom fame, he engaged in various ventures, from lending his voice to Hollywood is calling to seeking love on E's star dates. He even made a cameo as himself in David Spade's movie, Dickie Roberts' former child star, Shirley Hemphill. Shirley Hemphill, an American stand-up comedian and actress, was one of the cast members from the show What's Happening, who sadly passed away. Adored as Shirley Wilson by fans of the sitcom, she left a lasting impact. On December 10, 1999, Hemphill was discovered lifeless at her residence in West Covina, California, at the age of 52. Her body was found by a gardener who peered through a window and observed her on the bedroom floor. An autopsy revealed that Hemp Hill succumbed to kidney failure. She was later cremated. Born in Asheville, North Carolina, to Richard and Mozella Hemp Hill, she had a brother named William. Hemp Hill attended Hill Street School and Stevens Lee High School, securing an athletic scholarship to Morristown College, where she pursued physical education. Returning to Asheville, she worked in a nylon manufacturing factory. After the conclusion of What's Happening, Hemphill auditioned for the cook role on Archie Bunker's Place, but Anne Mira secured the part. Following this disappointment, she received an offer for the lead role in her own sitcom, One in a Million. In this series, she played Shirley Simmons, a taxi driver inheriting a massive corporation and fortune, premiering on ABC on January 8, 1980, the show failed to capture a sufficient audience, leading to its cancellation by ABC in June 1980. Mabel King, Mabel King, another member of the cast of What's Happening, has sadly passed away. Her portrayal of Mama Thomas in the sitcom for two consecutive seasons brought her both acclaim and recognition on the screen. King, who battled diabetes, underwent the amputation of one of her toes in 1986 due to the disease. In 1990, a stroke led her to the motion picture and television country house and hospital in Woodland Hills, California. The impact of diabetes continued as her left leg was amputated in 1991. 
followed by the amputation of her right leg in 1994. King also lost one of her arms to diabetes. On November 9, 1999, she passed away at the age of 66. Born Mabel Elizabeth Washington on Christmas Day 1932 in Charleston, South Carolina, to Rosalie Washington and Joseph Washington, she was raised in Harlem, New York, and later became a gospel and nightclub singer. It wasn't until her mid-30s in 1966 that she ventured into acting, playing the role of Maria in the national touring play of Porgy and Bess. The following year, she portrayed Ernestina in the Broadway musical comedy Hello, Dolly. King was married to Melvin King from June 1967 until September 1989. She had one child, a son named Larry Jr., with Larry Banks, who passed away in 1996. King was known for her staunch conservative Republican beliefs, fervently supporting the presidency of Ronald Reagan, Nathaniel Taylor. Fans of the TV series, What's Happening? Fondly remember Nathaniel Taylor for his role as Ike, making several appearances in various episodes of the show. Nathaniel Taylor, the actor renowned for portraying Rollo Lawson on the 1970s sitcom Sanford and Son, passed away on February 27, 2019, at the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center following a heart attack. He was 80. A recurring member of the cast in Sanford and Son, Taylor featured in 32 episodes from 1972 to 1977. His character, Rollo Lawson, served as Lamont Sanford's best friend and often faced the ire of Fred Sanford, who suspected Rollo of criminal activities due to his time spent in jail. Taylor continued his career with a main cast role in the first season of the short-lived Sanford and Son spinoff, Sanford, airing from March 1980 to June 1981. Taylor also contributed to The Red Fox Show, the eponymous sitcom of Sanford and Son star Red Fox, portraying the initial version of Jim Jam. Unfortunately, the series was canceled after 12 episodes due to low ratings. Beyond his involvement in the Sanford universe, Taylor amassed various TV and film credits, including appearances in two episodes of ABC's What's Happening as Rerun's brother-in-law, a role played by Fred Berry. He also played roles in films like Willie Dynamite, a black exploitation film, Trouble Man, featuring a soundtrack by Marvin Gaye, where he portrayed one of Biggs' henchmen, and The Hunter in 1980, Steve McQueen's final role before his passing. Taylor also took on minor roles in several 70s series, such as Harry O., The Bill Cosby Show, and Adam 12. Survived by his wife, Loretta, daughters LaRonda, Natalie, Donna, and Cheryl, sons Nate Jr., Kaede, and Jamal, six grandsons, seven great-grandchildren, one brother Eugene, and two sisters, Mary and Betty Thalmas Rasulala. Rasulala graced the TV series What's Happening in the role of Bill Thomas, appearing in Episode 7. Unfortunately, he passed away on October 9, 1991, succumbing to a heart attack in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Born as Jack Crowder in Miami, Florida, and an alumnus of the University of Redlands, he made notable contributions to various films and made guest appearances on television programs. Additionally, he attended classes at Shaw University, a historically black university in Raleigh, North Carolina, during the late 1970s. Rasulala's significant roles in black exploitation films included Sidney Lord Jones in Cool Breeze, 1972, Dr. Gordon Thomas in Blackala, 1972, and Robert Daniels in Willie Dynamite, 1974. He also served as the assistant director of The Slams, 1973. On November 6, 1984, Rasulala tied the knot with Sherlyn Mozingo. He is survived by his wife Sherlyn and their four children. He had previously been married to Martha Roberts, whom he wed in 1960, and together they had three children. They eventually divorced in 1977. His final appearance on the big screen was as General Afir in the comedy film Mom and Dad Save the World. Unfortunately, he passed away shortly after completing his scenes. 
and the film, released a year after his demise, pays tribute to his memory. Rasulala's passing occurred just two days before actor Red Fox's death, who also succumbed to a heart attack, and with whom Rasulala had guest starred on Sanford and Son. In that particular episode, he actively sought donations for heart attack prevention and awareness. Ven Helen Martin Helen Martin took on a dual role in the sitcom show, portraying Millie and Mrs. Lloyd, featuring solely in the third episode. On March 25, 2000, in Monterey, California, at the age of 90, Martin passed away due to a heart attack. Originally from St. Louis and raised in Nashville, Tennessee, Martin, the only child in a family of musicians, was initially groomed to become a concert pianist. Encouraged by her parents, she attended Fisk University for a brief period before venturing into acting. During the challenging times of the Great Depression, Martin sustained herself by working as a domestic worker. Later in life, Martin gained widespread recognition through her roles in popular television series, amassing a substantial audience. Notably, she had a recurring part as Wanda, Weeping Wanda, in the television series Good Times, and later portrayed the neighbor Pearl Shea in the television sitcom 227, spanning from 1985 to 1990. Martin also graced short-lived sitcoms such as Baby, I'm Back, playing the role of Luzelle, the mother-in-law, and That's My Mama. Her filmography includes diverse grandmother roles in movies, like Hollywood Shuffle, 1987, Don't Be a Menace to South Central, While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood, 1996, I Got the Hook Up, 1998, House Party 2, 1991, and the character Mama Doll in Bullworth, 1998. During an appearance on Late Night with Conan O'Brien to promote Don't Be a Menace, Martin created quite a stir with her candid remarks. In response to a question about playing a pot-smoking grandmother in the film, she exclaimed, I love the reefer, and even playfully suggested that she would have been a stripper if not for her acting career, following it up with a suggestive dance. Fritzy Burr, Mrs. Gertrude Collins, portrayed by Fritzy Burr, assumes the role of the boy's high school teacher. Fritzy Burr, an actress-singer-comedian with a career spanning seven decades across comedy circuits, Broadway, film, and TV, passed away on Jan. Seventeen in Fort Myers' flaw, due to natural causes. She was 78. Originally from Philadelphia, she carved out a niche as a comedian on the East Coast Little Theater circuit for two decades before making the move to Hollywood in the early 1960s. Notable in her repertoire is her portrayal of the nurse in the iconic vaudeville team Smith & Dale's timeless Dr. Cronkite comedy sketch. She later graced Broadway productions such as I Can Get It For You Wholesale and Once Upon a Mattress and took over the role of Mrs. Bryce from Kay Medford in the Broadway production of Funny Girl. Recognition came her way for her portrayal of Yenta the Matchmaker in the national touring company of Fiddler on the Roof, and she enjoyed a lengthy stint alongside Milton Berle in the road version of Norman Is That You. When not on stage, Burr devoted considerable time to volunteering at hospitals in California and Florida. She is survived by her sisters Temmie Salzman and Shirley Turtletaub, brother-in-law multi-hyphenate Saul Turtletaub, a niece, Dr. Nita Saltzman, and nephews Bennett Saltzman and Adam Turtletaub, along with producer-director John Turtletaub, Greg Morris. Fans of the show fondly recall him as Lawrence Nelson, having made appearances in just two episodes of the sitcom What's Happening. Morris passed away on August 27, 1996, succumbing to lung and brain cancer in Las Vegas, Nevada, at the age of 62. Hailing from Cleveland, Ohio, Morris, born to jazz trumpeter Francis Williams, served in the United States Army during the Korean War. While attending college in Iowa on the GI Bill, he actively participated in college theater and hosted the late afternoon jazz radio show, Tea Time, on the University of Iowa Station, WSUI. Collaborating with a student friend, Morris co-produced concerts at the university, 
In 1966, Morris secured his most notable role as the team electronics expert, Barney Collier, in the TV series Mission Impossible. He and Bob Johnson were the sole actors to stay with Mission Impossible for its entire run. Following the show's cancellation, Morris featured in several movies and made guest appearances on TV, including The Six Million Dollar Man, Episode 105, Little Orphan Airplane, 1974. In the final days before his 1996 passing, Morris watched the film adaptation of Mission Impossible, starring Tom Cruise. His strong disapproval led him to leave the theater early, denouncing it as an abomination. Morris wed his wife Leona Keyes in 1956, and their marriage endured for 40 years until his demise in 1996. They shared three children, including actor Phil Morris and actress Iona Morris. Leona Morris passed away on November 2, 2016, at the age of 81. Teddy Wilson Actor Teddy Wilson made three appearances on What's Happening, portraying three distinct characters. On July 21, 1991, Wilson passed away due to complications from a stroke at Cedars-Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles at the age of 47. He had undergone open-heart surgery several years before his demise. Hailing from Harlem, New York City, Wilson pursued music studies at Florida A&M University before transitioning to drama. After returning to New York, he became part of the Negro Ensemble Company and later collaborated with the R&A Stage Repertory. Wilson initiated his acting career with the Blaxploitation film Cotton Comes to Harlem in 1970. The subsequent year saw Wilson leaving New York City to relocate to Los Angeles, aiming to advance his acting journey. In September 1976, Wilson received and accepted a contract from Tandem Productions, the production company owned by Bud Yorkin and Norman Lear, renowned for producing some of the most beloved television sitcoms of the 1970s. Wilson went on to make guest appearances in various York and Lear-produced series, including All in the Family, Sanford and Son, What's Happening, The Jeffersons, and Thirteen Queens Boulevard. Wilson was a parent to three children, Theodore Jr., Robert, and Nicole. The latter two were born to actress Joan Pringle, Wilson's co-star during the second season of the television series That's My Mama. When Wilson passed away in 1991, Pringle was named the executrix of his estate, Wolfman Jack. Wolfman Jack took on the role of MC in the sitcom show. The iconic rock and roll disc jockey, known for his gravelly voice and distinctive wolf howls, passed away on July 1, 1995, at his residence following a heart attack. The Wolfman, born Robert Smith, had just returned to his Northeast North Carolina home after a 20-day promotional tour for his book, Have Mercy, when he collapsed, according to Lonnie Napier, vice president of Wolfman Jack Entertainment. Starting from May 1994, the Wolfman hosted a Friday night show live from Washington's Planet Hollywood Restaurant on Pennsylvania Avenue, N.W., the show featured crowd-pleasing records from the 1960s and early 1970s, such as Shout, alongside banter with sidekicks, engineers, and celebrity callers. The show played over the restaurant's sound system, encouraging diners to join in the fun. While already a familiar voice, it was his portrayal of himself in George Lucas's 1973 film American Graffiti that unveiled the face behind the voice to America. Following this film, the Wolfman ventured into advertising campaigns and made appearances on over 40 network TV shows. He even had his syndicated TV show, The Wolfman Jack Show. In the 1980s, the Wolfman assumed the role of the host for Rock and Roll Palace on the Nashville Network, featuring acts like the Shirelles, the Coasters, Del Shannon, Martha Reeves, and the Crickets. Dear wonderful viewers, as we reach the end of this incredible journey together, I want to express my deepest gratitude for joining us on this exploration of stories, memories, and the timeless magic of television. Stay tuned for upcoming videos that promise to be just as exciting and engaging. We've got a lot in store for you, and your continued support 
makes it all possible. Remember, our community is more than just viewers and creators. We're a family. So, until we meet again in the next video, take care of yourselves, stay inspired, and keep spreading positivity in everything you do. Thank you for being a part of this incredible journey. See you soon, and as always, much love.